Thank you for the good singing today. And uh, I'm glad that the blood is uh, still sufficient to save. And when God sees the blood, he will pass over us. And that's what it takes today is the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm thankful today that I have a time in my life where that blood was applied to me. And, uh, you know, he's promised anybody who would come unto him, he wouldn't turn them away. And I'm so thankful today that we all have opportunity to be saved and the Lord he's, he's made it possible so that whosoever should call upon him shall be saved but you have to uh, get to a place where that you're willing to give your entire life over to the Lord and you have to surrender everything that's within you over to God before you can be saved I've seen people before they'd come to the altar and they might pray for several uh, minutes maybe an hour or more and couldn't find peace and I believe they just they get to a place where they don't they're not ready to give everything over to the Lord. They're holding on to something. And um, when you know when you get saved, it's it's not a hard thing to get saved unless you're holding on to yourself and you're you're unwilling to to give everything to God. Uh, the night I got saved, I guess I prayed for about three minutes before the Lord saved me, and I got to a place where I was miserable and I realized. If I didn't have him save me, I'd die in my sin, lost without God. But I'm glad that, that God, he saved me, and he's, uh, he's put his spirit within me. And uh, I believe when we're saved, we uh, have the spirit of God within us, and our spirit bears witness with others, uh, other Christians that have the spirit of God as well. When we, uh, be, when we come in contact with him, we can feel uh, the spirit move, and we... We are like-minded and of like faith, and we have a similar experience of salvation, of grace. And, you know, I, I don't believe anybody, although we all repent and have faith to be saved, I believe you can have a different experience than I have when it comes to salvation. You may cry when you get saved. You may laugh when you get saved. You may rejoice in, in some way when you get saved. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just thankful today that when you get saved, that's when that peace of God comes to live inside of you. And the Spirit of God comes to live inside of you. And uh, what would we do tonight or this afternoon if we didn't have peace in our heart? I'd be a miserable person if I didn't have the peace of God inside of me. But I'm glad that we, we've come and we uh, have got saved by the grace of God many years ago down on our knees. And he gave us peace that passeth all understanding. He said, uh, as I preached this morning, he said, Be content with such things as you have. He said, For I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And, you know, you can have all the money in the world. You can have all that the world has to offer. But if you lack the peace of God, then you're a miserable person. And uh, there, there's just something special about having that peace. He said that passeth all understanding. And this is a peace that the world cannot offer you. It's a peace that you can't get anywhere else but with God. And I'm so thankful today that God, he's saved me. He's given me peace in my heart. When I lay down at night, I can feel his peace. I can feel his presence. When I wake up every morning, I can still feel that same peace and still feel that same presence. He's promised us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And if I live to be 100 years old, Brother Keith, I'd believe that one night, or I mean, 100 years, say if I live to be 100 years old, I believe when I wake up the next morning, I'll still feel his presence. Because he has promised to abide within us, and I believe that uh, he, he's given us that spirit of God within us, and I'm so thankful for that peace today that Jesus will give you peace if you call upon his name. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 19, it says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And uh, I'm glad I have a hope that goes beyond this world. I'm glad I have a hope. It's not a, I hope I'm going to make it to heaven, but it's a no-so salvation, and it's as good as if I'm already there. It's uh, eternal uh, security in my heart that I'm saved and it's by the foreknowledge of God that, it, it, that he knew I'd get saved and he knows that one day in heaven after a while I will be there with him and we'll be an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ and we will uh, wave the palm branches of victory one day after a while rejoicing because we got saved by the grace of God because that blood, when he saw us and saw that blood, he, he passed over us. The judgment of God ain't going to fall upon me if you're lost to today and you don't have Jesus in your life, if you've never been saved, if you don't have that blood applied 
the judgment of God will fall upon you if you don't get the charge dropped. But I'm so glad that, that Christ, he made a way where we can all be saved. He said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. But I'm glad I've got a hope beyond this world. I'm glad I've got a hope that's going to last forever. It's eternal. And he says later on in the chapter, he says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. He goes on to say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, but, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He says the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. You see, because the law commanded us to be perfect, and we couldn't be. We couldn't abide the law, by the law. We couldn't keep the law. But he said, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't fulfill the law, but Christ in us and through us, he can fulfill the law in us and through us. And Jesus, he came because he is the only one that could ever keep that law. The law that God commanded Moses out of Mount Sinai and the law that went forth, and we know all the different commandments that went forth. Jesus Christ is the only one that's ever walked that could have kept that law. And tonight I'm glad that he's, he's able to keep that law, and because he was able, he was able to be that uh, sacrifice on the cross. He died that substitutionary death. And it said, Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. I have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ today. He said, therefore, therefore, meaning look back at what you just read. He said, my beloved brethren, talking to believers, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so, church, today I want you to know that we need to remain steadfast, we need to remain unmovable, and we need to always be abounding in the work of the Lord, for our labor is not in vain. There's a work to be done around here at Friendship. And Brother Jonathan, there's a work to be done in Russell. There's a work to be done, Brother Keith, at your church. And, and I'm so grateful, though, that we all serve the same God and we're all on the same mission and we all have the same goal in our mind and we're all striving to reach that promised land one day. But while we're here, while there's time and opportunity, we need to be always abounding in the work for the Lord. And today, Jesus, he can help us if we'll look to him for guidance, if we'll trust in him, and we'll obey him. The song says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You have to trust the Lord, but then you have to obey the Lord. And, and throughout the Christian life, it's not always going to be easy, but if you trust the Lord and you obey the Lord, and you can use that phrase, trust and obey, and you can apply that to about anything. When it comes to church, if you trust the Lord and you obey the Lord, you can't go wrong. But in life, if you trust the Lord and you obey the Lord, the Lord's going to take good care of us. He's promised us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. I'm glad I'm saved today. Thankful to be a child of God. And uh, we're going to give you a chance just for a moment, brief moment, if you have it burning on your heart to testify or brag on the Lord, we want you to do so at this time. After this, we'll turn it over to the preacher. And uh, we may get another song, Brother Jonathan, and then, then uh, turn it over to you if, if that's all right. But, but while uh, we wait just for a moment, is there anybody that needs to testify before we go further in the service? The Lord's... Bless you, Sister Kel. Somebody else want to testify about the goodness of God? If... Amen. Bless you, Sister Danica. Somebody else tonight or this afternoon? If not, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. After this, we'll stand and we'll sing a song together. And after that song, we'll turn it over to Brother Jonathan for the preaching hour. If you pray for God's man today as he comes to preach for us, and uh, you pray for him that God would use him and God would give him the liberty that he needs. And uh, I trust and pray that uh, the Lord will speak to us and through us through his word. I have no doubt in my mind. I wouldn't call Brother Jonathan to come preach for us if I didn't have confidence in him. But I have no doubt in my mind that he'll mind the Lord. And you give him your undivided attention for just a few moments while he preaches to us. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer if we would, and after this we will go further in the service. Brother Keith Hood, would you lead us in prayer today? Oh, yes. Yes, Lord, help us today. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, God. Help us today. Oh, yes. No man's land. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, God, help us today. Amen. You might stand at this time. We'll sing together, and after this song, we'll turn over to Brother John. privilege and honor it is to come out here and be with y'all. I know y'all ain't ever heard me preach and probably don't know me that well, but uh, I'm not I'm not much of a man, ain't much of a person, but the Lord, he didn't call us for what we were, he called us for what he wants us to be. 
That's why I'm going to try my best to be here today is just be a vessel uh, that uh, wants to be used of him, Brother James. And If you're here today in church, uh, I just started thinking about the other day about the disciples whenever uh, he went to Simon. He was teaching on the boat. And, uh, Simon told him, said, we toiled all night and we ain't caught nothing, Brother James. I was thinking about, you know, the church, they go through dry spells, Brother Mike, or we think we go through dry spells and not catching anything. But he told him, he said, just launch out into the deep. Where we are, we going to be willing to launch out this week, go into the deep places, search in the deep of our heart to look for what the Lord wants us to have this week in these services. If we're saved and not where we need to be, like I said Thursday night in my prayer and how I tell friendship all the time at in Rustful, the revival's going to have to come through the church. It ain't going to come through Brother Micah or Brother Joel. It's going to have to come through the church. And unless y'all pray it down, it'll do no good. That's why it's so important for the church to be where they need to be at. And I'm not just harping on y'all. Uh, Brother Micah's got to be where he needs to be. i got to be where I need to be. And Brother Joel has to be where he needs to be. It's one big body, Brother Micah. We're all in this thing together. Churches think that, I guess, that they're the only ones out there a lot of times. I, I get that way sometimes with myself, think that I'm the only one left out there that's still holding to uh, God's unchanging hand. But then I travel around and see others that are laboring in just a different vineyard, just a little bit over. And that's why he sets us up in so many different places, Brother James. He puts me where I need to be at, uh, puts you where you need to be at, puts Brother Micah here at Friendship in Red Bay where he needs to be at because he knows that's where he wants us at and where we can do some good at. So don't think that your labor is in vain because it's not in vain. We just need to keep laboring, Brother Preston, and keep uh, launching out into the deep where the Lord wants us at. He don't, want, he don't want us in the shallow waters all the time, Brother Micah. He wants us out there in the deep where we got to step out by faith when we can't see what's out there, Brother Keith. But we just got to step out by faith, trusting, and, and that he'll take care of us and whatever we come in contact with. And, and I'm telling you, my faith gets weak throughout the week. Uh, y'all called uh, one of the sorriest preachers to start y'all revival out because I get, I get weak in faith all the time, Brother Micah. And if you saw what I was before the Lord called me to preach, you probably wouldn't want me up here anyway. So I don't really understand why he called me, but I want to do my part to the best of my ability because I wasted so much time out there in the world living uh, like the devil when I was saved, but yet... He got me back where I needed to be. He started setting my fields on fire. started burning things down around me to uh, get my attention. I'm thankful to God that he got my attention and that he didn't call me out of this uh, walks of life. And I just tell you, I was at work one day and he done put uh, many things in my path to try to get me back to where he wanted me to be. But he took that uh, bucket swinging and hit me uh, when I was close to a ditch and I was laying there on the couch uh, while, uh, while a Flat Creek revival was going on, I told the Lord, I said, you just let me go, uh, get to Flat Creek tomorrow night and I'll surrender to what you wanted me to do. But he wanted me to surrender it right there, Brother Micah. He wouldn't want me to wait till tomorrow night. He just wanted me to surrender it all right there, Brother James. And I told him, I told the Lord, I said, if you'll just let Daddy preach a message about Jonah and the whale uh, the, 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 tomorrow night, I'll surrender it all. And I told Emory, I said, you go get you a book to read tonight before we go to bed. You know what she came back with? She came back with John and the well. The Lord will do everything to the best of his ability to get your attention, but it's your free will of what you do with it. You can keep running and keep running and keep running from the Lord's will, but when you surrender it all to him, whether you be saved and running from what the Lord wants you to do or whether you be lost, and running from that free gift of salvation that he's offering to you so full and free. It'll be the greatest day in your life. You'll receive the victory, Brother Micah. You'll have uh, that wonderful peace that Brother Micah has done talked about. And we was over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as well. And just start thinking about that corruptible man and that incorruptible man. And Brother Micah, he's already started it off pretty good for us. So we're going to uh, follow behind him to the best of our ability. And and brother, I've known Brother Micah my whole life, and I appreciate him. And the man of God he is, uh, the man of God he is, the example he is to me. He's younger than me, but he's been a great example to me. A lot of the older ones think that the younger ones can't be an example to them, but it works and vice versa, Brother Micah. We can be examples to other, uh, help each other along this way. And I believe uh, God wants us to help each other. We.
just like I said, we think we're all alone out there on the island sometimes. But we got the Lord and our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us out along the way. I'm so thankful for that. But over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, to start with that 51st verse, it said, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall, be, uh, we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on, it must put on in, incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, A death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know uh, that your labors are not in vain. And we're going to ask Brother Preston Terry to lead us in prayer, if he will. Amen. I guess our main thought will be in that 57th, 57th verse. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory uh, through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And I just think about so many people walking around in this life uh, trying to win the victory for themselves. But all they got to do, Brother James, is come before the Lord and plead guilty telling Him uh, what they are, that they're a sinner and they, they need to be saved by His grace. And I'm so thankful that one day I, I preached this morning, I thank the brethren that preached y'all's last revival, preached the message about Behold the Lamb of God, Brother Mike, and I don't know why the thought keeps coming back to me, so for those that friendship and rust will might get a little bit of a repeat, but uh, that's what we're going to have to do. If you're here and lost, you're going to have to behold the Lamb of God and what He uh, done for you on the cross to Calvary. He so freely gave Himself for you and me, uh, that way we might have life and have it more eternal. And that's why we have the victory, Brother Micah, not of any worse of righteousness that we have done, because all our righteousness it's just filthy rags in the sight of the Lord and it's all a level ground at Calvary you're a sinner and I'm a sinner and we all come the same way I'm so thankful that there ain't many ways in this life that man might be saved but it's all through Jesus Christ brother James that gives us the victory it's not in any man People's putting their confidence in mankind today and the preachers that are out there. But if you put your confidence in Jonathan Prince, you just go on down the road a little while and you'll see my faults and failures and my sin. And that's why I can't I get nobody to God. That's why I can't save them, Brother James. But I can point them to the, uh, the perfect sacrifice that uh, came into this low land of sin and sorrow uh, that can save you and save you eternally. He don't halfway do his job. When he starts to work, he'll finish it. He'll finish it all, Brother Micah. He'll win. The victory's already been won at Calvary. Uh, when he walked up Calvary's hill and carried uh, that cross and our burdens above on his shoulder and we're trying to win the victory here today brother James but uh, the victory's already been won uh, so if you're here and lost all you got to do is come and claim that victory because he will uh, give you the victory in your life and if you're here and saved and going uh, through these little uh, battles in life you know we just call uh, uh, things little battles but to you it is a big battle if it's in your life and when there's little things in my life, they are big battles. But I'm here to tell you they're only battles and they're temporary. And all we got to do is put our trust and faith in him, Brother James, and he'll win each and every little battle that we 
come through here in this life. And one day we'll receive the victory. Uh, that's why we can save. Oh, grave, oh, where's the, oh, death, where's the sting? Oh, grave, where's the victory? Because it's just the start of, uh, of our praising him forevermore uh, to the best of our ability, Brother James. We try to praise him uh, to the best of our ability here in this life. And we can't, we won't ever uh, be able to praise him perfectly, Brother Micah. I've been in services where I believe we almost got there. But I don't believe I've ever been in a perfect church service. Because if I had been, I believe there have been, uh, that every sinner could, would have been saved in it, Brother James. But yet, when we get to heaven, we'll be able to praise him uh, with a perfect voice. We have these good singers here and the good piano players. But yet, it's not a perfect voice, Brother James. But when we get over there, we'll be able to praise him perfectly, Brother Micah. And I'm so thankful for that, that uh, through my stumbling words here in this life, I try to tell others uh, to try to compel them uh, to, to try to, uh, to, to, to come and get the Savior that I have because he's worthy of all honor, glory, and praise uh, that we could ever give anybody. A uh, people is seeking after honor and glory here in this life, but there's no man here in this life that's worth honor, honor and glory and over. We need to leave. Uh, he deserves all of our honor. He deserves, deserves all of the glory that we could ever give to him. Why? Because he gave us the victory one day. This corruptible, uh, here in this life, this corruptible man must put on the incorruptible spirit, Brother Micah. And if you don't put it on here in this life, this corruptible man's going, this corruptible man's going to die. This mortal man's going to die, and it's going to end up in hell. This life ain't, ain't you ain't promised tomorrow, Brother James. You ain't promised uh, this ten o'clock service that y'all got planned tomorrow. And that's why he said, uh, "Now is the time, Brother Micah. Uh, now's the time to get right uh, for the lost and saved alike." I just think about the boy. I uh, my my wife. She graduated with his brother. And he's only 24 years old. Got killed in a car wreck uh, the other night. And then I think about the other two from Russell, brother Micah. Uh, just young people uh, going out uh, to meet the judgment, brother James. And they're leaving left and right. And there's some younger than them, and there's some older than them. But we're not promised tomorrow, church. And that's why we need to launch out into the deep and get out there into the community. And brother Micah's going to the jail. My goodness, we need to get out there because there's people everywhere around us uh, that are dying and going to hell. And I'm so thankful for the gospel uh, that was preached to me one day with love, Brother James. He, my daddy wouldn't bash me over the head with it. He wouldn't force me into nothing, but he preached the message out of love. And the Lord, he reached down into my heart and showed me uh, that he was there for me and he was extending his hand of mercy for me. And I turned him away so many times but he passed by my way one more time, thanks God. And when I stepped out of that aisle, I was clenching that bitch and didn't know where to turn. I was holding on to being a preacher's kid. I was holding on to being 11 years old and not having done anything much bad. But I was just as headed to hell as anybody else was. And I'm so thankful that I put all my trust and faith in him when I stepped out of that aisle and he gave me the victory. It wasn't no prayer I prayed. It wasn't nothing that I said. It was just that step of faith when my heart got right with him and the Lord saved me and gave me the victory. I'm thankful that Brother Micah said we all have our different ways of how we express our salvation. I didn't know no shouting that day but my mama sure did some shouting and I'm thankful for it because when she started shouting uh, that joy just got amplified even more Brother James. I'll tell you what church, we need to launch out just a little bit deeper. Oh, stay. Uh, it said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of, uh, the sting of death is sin, and the, sting, uh, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. That, that perfect sacrifice, I, I tell him all the time at friendship about him being that perfect sacrifice, Brother Micah. Uh, they was just sacrificing year after year, year after year, uh, the best sacrifice that they had. But yet the Lord, he said, I'm going to send him a better way. I'm going to send him my son, the one that only has to die once for, and shed his blood once uh, for each and every person in the world. Uh, nobody else has to go up and round up a sacrifice, Brother James, because the Lord and Savior is our sacrifice, and he went voluntarily. He didn't, uh, he didn't bargain with the Lord when uh, the Lord told him to go and uh, give himself for each and every one of us. He just said, I'll go, Lord, because that's what you want me to do. He had everything. He had heaven. He had earth. He owned it all. But yet he gave it all up because Brother Preston said this morning, the rich man became poor for us. Uh, that way we may.
they, be, they become rich in him. I'm so thankful for that, Brother Preston. I was a poor boy that morning and didn't have much, but he made me rich in him, and now I own it all because I'm a heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. I might not be able to claim it here in this life, but I'll claim it one day after a while all because of the victory that he gave me. And Brother Michael, we talk about the crowns, and I don't know if there will be any crowns in heaven or if I'll get one at all. But if there, if there are any, we ain't going to hold on to them long because we're going to cast them before his feet because he's the only one that deserves it all. I'm so thankful for him. Behold the Lamb of God. Are you, If you're here and lost, or just look through our eye of faith towards him. I know it's a, I told him this morning at Friendship, uh, my daddy, he does a great job of uh, getting into detail about that crucifixion and what all the Lord done to, uh, done for us. And that used to be an ugly scene for me, but yet it became beautiful for me because I seen what he done for me. He shed his life's blood uh, for you and me. That way, my, that way we might have that wonderful peace. And that way, if one day after a while, we can say, farewell, farewell, a sweet hour of prayer. <laughs> we pray about things here in this life. Some of them come to pass and some of them don't. And we get so bowed down with so many things. But yet, when we come to on uh, when I get on deathbed, brother Micah, I can say farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. And I don't know what uh, the sting of death may be, and I dread it. I do dread the sting of death. But I know that uh, after I pass from death unto life, brother James, I'll be with the one that saved me and saved me eternally, the one that walked with me and talked with me through my whole life, the one that was guiding me in the right path, the one that wanted to, uh, that wanted me to have all the fullness of his joy here in this life, the one that gave me grace for grace, a grace didn't stop at salvation, his grace just keeps on going with us. He gives us grace to live, and he'll give us grace to die by. Ain't you thankful for that? If you dread death, and if you're hearing loss, you ought to dread it, because when you die, you'll end up in hell. And that's why I want you to behold the Lamb of God today, or behold him this week, and realize of what you are, just lost and undone, and realize that there ain't nothing that you can do uh, to receive salvation, but come to him and beg him for that thing that he so freely gives. So what are you going to do today? Brother Mike, if you'll come, I know this ain't been long, ain't been much, but it's what the Lord's put on my heart. I love you, yes, church. I appreciate you. Bless you, preacher. Amen. Let's preach. Let's preach. Let's all stand if we would. Let's stand across the building. That's good preaching, Brother John. Thought about the uh, scripture he preached from and the words he was saying, and I'm I can't add nothing to that. That's that's gospel preaching. But he mentioned how Christ went to the cross. And I thought about the verse in Colossians 2 and 14. It said, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He took that law and he nailed it to the cross. And now we're, we're not under the law. We're, the law was our schoolmaster. It taught us what we were. But it couldn't do nothing for us. But by the grace of God, we can be saved today. Jesus came and he paid that price in full on Calvary's tree. And he paid the debt that we owed. He didn't owe a debt, but he paid it in full. The one that we couldn't pay. And today you've heard the gospel. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. You read on over in the first John and it talks about how you have the victory when you overcome. And you overcome by faith. Today you can have that same victory Brother Jonathan's talking about that he's preached to you about that he's told you about when he got saved. You can have that same victory that I have that I got at Eastside many years ago. And today if you don't have the victory of Jesus Christ living within you, if you don't have that peace of God in you, you need to come and get saved while there's time and opportunity. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Let's sing. And uh, if you need to come pray today, you come to the altar and pray.